Okay, let's uh, let's uh, close the voting here on the attendance check. And again, this is just a test vote, and uh, and then we'll get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm calling Arlington's annual town meeting session eight to order on Wednesday, May 18th. And so let's get start started with the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. Okay, so uh, just some brief opening remarks. Uh, I want to remind everyone that I, along with committee chairs, the town manager, department heads, and others, are available to answer questions outside of the meeting. Some questions might be generally informative to the meeting, while others like administrative corrections or procedural questions are often best answered outside of the meeting uh, in the interest of time. Next, I wanted to give a quick update on our progress. Uh, thank you for the suggestion during the Q&A tonight. Uh, we've completed 49 articles, including the special town meeting with 34 articles remaining. That's a 59% completion rate Ignoring the first night when we went through the consent agenda, which is pretty different from the other nights, uh, we're averaging four articles per night. That's pretty slow, especially compared to anecdotal comparisons with town meetings in other towns, which often complete in a single day, which I know it seems pretty unthinkable to us. Um, uh, the pace has picked up in the last two meetings, uh, which is good. Uh, but if, if we finish out with only four articles tonight or, or per night, um, uh, which again is our average overall so far, ignoring the first meeting. Uh, if we finish out with four articles per night, we'll finish on June 20th, which is too late. I know I've said in the past that June 20th is like our hard deadline. Um, uh, after further review, we probably cannot meet on June 20th because uh, of the Juneteenth holiday. It's likely to be a holiday the, 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 the following day on the Monday, which is June 20th. Um, so we really need to be finished prior to June 20th, uh, which is uh, the last meeting day uh, before that. Let me just pull that up, is on the calendar, one sec. Would be June 15th, the, the, the Wednesday prior. Um, unless, of course, we, we meet on an additional day uh, prior uh, to the 20th. Uh, you can find the progress, uh, this information updated in real time about our progress uh, at arlingtonma.gov slash town meeting progress. Um, okay, that's all I have for tonight. Uh, so uh, let's move on to swearing in. If any new town meeting members still need to be sworn in, please uh, contact our town clerk, Julie Brazil, uh, about getting sworn in. Uh, next, I recognize the chair of the select board, uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. It is moved that if all business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, then when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 23rd, 2022 at 8 p.m. We have a second? Second. Okay, so we have a, a Mr. Foskett seconds uh, Mr. Diggins motion. Uh, are there any objections to, uh, if we do not finish tonight and we 
will almost certainly not finish tonight. Um, uh, but uh, that when we adjourn tonight, that we adjourn to Monday, May 23rd at 8 p.m. Uh, please enable raise hands in Zoom. And if there's any objections, please raise your hand. And seeing none, um, the motion passes. Uh, I now call for any announcements or resolutions. Please use uh, raised hands in Zoom uh, if you have any announcements or resolutions. That's it. Uh, Mr. Oster, um, please go ahead with your announcement. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Adam Oster, Precinct 3. Um, I uh, held several budgets under Article 50 to ask a question about the town's implementation of its climate change and sustainable transportation plans. Uh, the town manager has made a detailed reply in writing, and tonight it's available to read under Article 50 on the virtual warrant. In the interest of time, I did not ask my questions during Monday's meeting, but I would like to suggest that town meeting members might want to read the exchange. Um, and I, Mr. Moderator, I also request that it be included in the official record of the meeting. Uh, I, I accept that request. Um... So let's include that in the official record of the meeting. And thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Oster, for your thoughtfulness uh, respecting the time of the meeting. Now, normally, I just want to clarify, normally, uh, I, I would not allow uh, uh, materials to be added uh, to the annotated warrant after an article uh, has been closed. Uh, but uh, in this case, there was actually a technical uh, issue that prevented uh, us from attaching that document, th that letter to uh, the annotated warrant uh, for Article 50. Uh, so we've corrected that now. Um, thank you. Uh, any other announcements or resolutions? I see uh, uh, Ms. Rowe has her hand raised. My mistake, Mr. Moderator. Um, okay, no. okay, no worries. Um, Here's we have we have no other hands raised uh, for announcements or resolutions. So I now call for reports that are ready to be received. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, Charles Foskett, Precinct Ten, and uh, Chair of the Finance Committee. I move that Article Three be laid upon the table. Okay, we have Second. motion. We have motion. I'm sorry, uh, be removed from the table. Right, we have a motion from Mr. Foskett uh, for Article 3 to be removed from the table so we can uh, bring it in front of us and a second by Ms. Brazil. Um, any objections, please raise your hands in Zoom. Seeing none, I declare it a unanimous vote. Uh, uh, Art uh, Article 3 is now before us and we can now receive reports. Uh, do we have any reports to be received? You can use raise hands in Zoom if you have a report from a committee or board to be received. Okay. Seeing none, um, Mr. Foskis? Mr. Moderator, I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. Second. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Foskis to lay Article 3 on the table and a second from Ms. Brazil. Uh, please raise hands in Zoom if you have any objections. And seeing none, I declare it a unanimous vote and Article 3 is now laid upon the table. Uh, so that brings Article 60 before us right now, uh, which is where we left off on Monday. And so where we left off, we uh, had just opened up the speaking queue, and we should be able to restore that uh, momentarily. And uh, I believe Mr. Kepline had spoken. Uh, Mr. Kepline had uh, removed Article 60 from the consent agenda. And so now uh, we should have a number of speakers uh, before us. So, um, yes, let's take uh, Mr. Uh, oh, before we take that, we have a point of order from Mr. Warden. Let's take that. Mr. Warden, uh, name and precinct uh, as soon as you're able to speak. Uh, Mr. Warden, are you able to unmute your computer?
couldn't see the damn thing. Okay. There it is. Uh, we can okay. hear you, Mr. Gordon. Um, uh, name here. Your, okay, your, hear me now? Uh, yes, I can. Name and precinct uh, at your point of order, please. Sorry, yes. I, I, I have, I had an announcement. I pushed the raised hand several times, but apparently it didn't register on your computer or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, is this something that we could take up at, uh, at another time, perhaps at uh, Monday's meeting? Is that possible? Well, it depends on, I want to withdraw, withdraw something on a consent agenda. So if we don't get to that by tonight. Okay, well, we can, we can take it up when we get to that item on the consent agenda. Okay. Oh, can we? Okay, well, that's all right. Great. All right. I, if I just wanted to say when I'm audible, uh, we have eight nights left. And I, just, I would like to say that in the 52 years that I've been in town meeting, we faced the same deadline. We've often had longer warrants. We didn't even used to have speaking limits. Okay. Uh, and including 19 years when I was moderator, and we always got done typically with time to spare. So let's not panic about it. We'll get it done. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, part of my job is to panic about that, but thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I did uh, make a comment in the letter that I released uh, in recent days that if uh, if there are, I know there's anecdotal uh, experience about uh, the rate at which we get through time meeting and that it tends to speed up over time. If anyone wants, I haven't had the bandwidth to compile historical information on that. If anyone wants to go back through the records, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated to see if we could actually quantify that sort of kind of increase in rate uh, of getting through the meeting. Thank you. Okay, so let's get back to the speaker queue. Uh, and so let's take up Mr. Revlock. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. This is Steve Revelak from Precinct 1. I was wondering, according to the Finance Committee report, there were 10,000 trips taken from our blue bike stations, which wasn't enough to cover all of the associated costs. Um, how many trips would we need in order to break even? Okay, so who can we ask about this? Uh, do you have anyone on the, on the panel who would volunteer to answer this question? Let's see. Uh, Ms. Wright, uh, can, you, can you feel that? Yes, I can, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Rate, Director of Planning and Community Development. Our contract with Motivate, the third party operator of the system, would require the town to make about double the trips we've been taking. The current total trip number includes time during the pandemic. So we still have time to make up these trips. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, and, or Ms. Wright, um, now if, with our, if our contract were renewed, would we be able to get additional docking stations? Uh, Ms. Wright. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Wright, Director of Planning and Community Development. We conducted two surveys regarding the placement of additional docking stations and have hoped since the beginning of our participation in this regional bike share program that we would generate enough trips to extend stations to places like Arlington Heights. The surveys conducted by the town indicated support for adding new stations. And with this appropriation, yes, we can add two more stations. Thank you. Okay, that's good. And um, if would adding two more stations increase the number of trips that are required for us to break even? Uh, Ms. Ray? Thank you for this question. But to clarify, Mr. Revelak, are you saying the same proportionally in number of trips or the same total number? I was thinking same total number. Okay, it is my understanding that the same number of trips would be needed with an expansion of the docking stations. Okay, so the same number of trips per station effectively. Effectively, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Mr. Moderator, in terms of the cost of the stations, does Arlington have a different type of agreement than other communities like uh, say Cambridge or Somerville? And if so, how is our agreement different? Ms. Wright? The cost of the stations and the equipment is the same in Arlington as it is in the other communities that are part of this regional bike share program. Thank you. Okay, now um, in Arlington, the sign areas on our docking station typically say blue bikes on one side and they've got docking instructions on the other. Now on this, the docking stations in say Cambridge, Somerville or Boston, uh, one of the signs typically has a map and the other typically has a sponsorship, um, sort of like the visual equivalent of a public radio underwriting spot. Um, now that we've sort of codified sign types for these stations, is it likely we'll be able to offset some of the cost with uh, sponsorship revenue? Ms. Wright? Blue Bikes has a sponsorship model, which the town would follow. 
Any sponsorship revenue that we generate would support up to two years of installation of the docking stations and their operations and maintenance. Okay. And do we have any um, information on blue bike trips that started in Arlington and ended in another community? Ms. Ray? Blue Bikes provides origin and destination data, which show that bike users are coming to Arlington from neighboring communities predominantly. There are many different types of Blue Bikes users and types of trips that have been taken. Some bikes are used for commuting to deployment, while others seem to be used for local trips or activities. Our surveys that I mentioned earlier in my answers showed that many Blue Bikes riders took short trips. Up until this week, actually this past week, we didn't have these data available. We just received them and we will continue to review and analyze the details and then report it. Okay, so uh, just to go back, if, if I may, um, you said there were, no, Ms. Rate said that there were a number of trips that were brought into Arlington. So conceivably there are people using blue bikes to say visit our restaurants or our, our businesses. Uh, Ms. Rate, do we know if that's the case? I, again, due to recently receiving data and information, mm. if thousands of trips taken, we'll need to further analyze those data and report back. Okay. But we know and, that there are many short trips. Sorry. Thank you. All right. No, that's great. Um, and last question. I'm wondering uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, if Ms. Rate, um, I don't believe she had a chance to introduce the article, and I'd like to understand uh, the planning department's motivation for bringing this article to town meeting. Okay, uh, Ms. Rate, you have up to two minutes and six seconds of Mr. Replak's time to uh, cover that. Thank you. Well, this is not simply a department motivation. It is part of a town-wide effort to improve transportation options for residents and improve the quality of life. It aligns with master plan recommendation number 70 to participate in a regional bike share program and the goals of Connect Arlington and the Net Zero Action Plan, as was referenced in the introduction to this article by the Finance Committee. This is also about better connecting residents to a highly successful transportation program and system operating in the rest of the region. There is a strong demand in town for this program and this appropriation will allow the town to remain in the program for the near term and to further build it out in Arlington as part of that system. Thank you. All right, I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and Ms. Wright. Great, thank you. And apologies to Ms. Wright that I didn't give you time earlier to uh, uh, cover that. Um, let's take, uh, and just FYI, we are, given like the uh, speaker that we had uh, from Monday on this article, we're actually, we're actually just now at the 15 minute mark, but we're obviously just getting started with debate. So I'm going to go uh, a bit longer uh, and there's obviously a lot of speakers in the queue. So a lot of folks have a lot to say. So let's, uh, let's continue taking speakers despite being at the 15 minute mark. Let's take Mr. Holland next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rod Holland, Precinct 7. Um, I, I just want to make a couple of, of fairly simple points framing what, what this is. Um, the principal value of, of the Blue Bike Program is that um, it puts the Arlington Bike Share Facility in a larger metropolitan network. Uh, uh, it gives us last, last mile uh, transportation um, uh, with uh, the MBTA. Um, and it uh, basically uh, allows the users of the Blue Bike program not to worry about locking up their bicycles to street furniture and, you know, coming back and finding uh, that, that things have been vandalized or stolen. Um, so so there, there's uh, some real value here. It um, also provides a complementary public transportation capability uh, during the pandemic that doesn't require sitting next to 30 or 40 of your closest friends wondering, uh, you know, if you're going to uh, catch something. Uh, so uh, the, you know, structure of, of the 
you know, contractor uh, uh, performing services for a for a, a public um, facility, which is what this is, is not remarkable. And um, the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee urges the passage of this. Um, I think it's it's good common sense. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, uh, Mr. Holland. Uh, let's take Ms. Lofchuk next. Beth Malofchek, uh, Precinct 9. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm uh, concerned about this expenditure for blue bikes in the context of the declining funds from the override in 2019. I understand in um, 2024, we may face voting on an override three times the sum in 2019. So I would like to hear what the select board's insight uh, is in supporting this expenditure. I mean, many things are nice to have, but this one in particular, I'm not sure we need. I my my constituents I live in an R4 zone in the center of Arlington and my constituents found the recent the 2019 override and the debt ex, uh, exclusion uh, particularly challenging so I I'd like to represent the voices of the taxpayers in my precinct and ask for the uh, select board's insight uh, for expenditures that, frankly, are a luxury. Uh, uh, Mr. Diggins, uh, can you answer Ms. Lopchik's question? Uh, sure. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Well, the select board didn't weigh in on this article uh, specifically. I mean, as a member of the select board, but also as a member of the Transportation Advisory Committee, and, and uh, I worked uh, as a member of the Sustainable Transportation excuse me, Sustainable Transportation Plan Advisory Committee, it, I am all in favor of this article and supporting it because I do think it helps us create a more sustainable net, transportation network, which I think is vital me, to, to helping us to fight um, climate change me, and to make transportation safer and more accessible to, to more people in the community in the region. So personally, I support it. You know, I'm not gonna speak with my colleagues, you know, but I personally support it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Moderator. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Moderator, I'm not finished. Thank you. I believe I still have time. Mm -hmm. I did the select board have a recommended vote for this? And I, I see that as support for it. If there was a recommended vote. Uh, Mr. I, I don't have that right in front of me. Mr. Diggins, do you happen to know what the, do you mean like what, what the vote number was out of the five members? Supporting, or? yes, yes, supporting the expenditure. Mr. Diggins, do you know, do you have, have that uh, at your fingertips, like what, what the vote count was? I mean, my recollection is that this did not come before the select board, you know, that it, it went before. Oh, this was finance committee, right. Um, right. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, uh, Foskett? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, yes, this came before the Finance Committee and uh, the Finance Committee supported it, but not unanimously. It was, a, a, I think, a 9-7, and it's in the report. It's a 9-7 and, and two, uh, two vote. 9-7 with two abstentions, is that right? Uh, I can tell you in one second here. I'm sorry, um, it was 11 to five. 11 to five, okay. Okay. Ms. Lobchuk, do you have anything else? Well, I am, I am concerned. I continue to be concerned about 
as I said, an expenditure in light of the looming, uh, looming future overrides. And I, um, I had my name up to query during the budgets too, at least, and I wasn't called on. So I had to put it in the context of this. But again, I think there are things that are nice to have and that things we can afford. And I don't think the town uh, should be looking towards this expenditure without a clear idea of what the select board's plan is for uh, cutting spending, being fiscally responsible in the face of an override in 2024 that would be three times the one we had in 2019. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Beth Malofchek, Precinct 9. Great, thank you, Ms. Malofchek. Uh, so we're at the 23 minute mark. Let's take uh, Mr. Tosti and then I think we'll take a, I'll take a straw poll after that um, to, see if, to gauge interest in terminating debate. Mr. Tosti? Yes, Mr. Moderator, Alan Tosti, Precinct 17. <clears throat> I'm glad the last uh, speaker uh, voiced her concerns about the taxpayer because uh, that's my concern right now. The taxpayer is taking quite a hit over the last three years and into the next couple of years between the debt exclusions in uh, 2019 and 2020 and the overrides in 2020 and the override coming in 2024. Now, I supported these overrides and debt exclusions because they were necessary to provide the core services of the town of Arlington. They were there to provide public education for our students uh, and safe buildings. They were there to provide for public, service, uh, public safety DPW, libraries, and all the other services that the town provides to the citizens. This blue, bank, uh, blue bike subsidy is not one of those services. Just to give a little history, remember we used to have green bikes. Uh, and of course, green bikes were deposited all over the town in any place people left. Uh, they went, uh, they fell apart and were withdrawn from the system and now we have the blue bike program. Uh, but blue, bike, blue bikes uh, claimed they needed startup money. They needed some help to get going. So they approached the town, I think it was two or three years ago, and they wanted $100,000 to help from the town of Arlington. Uh, there was a great deal of uh, hesitation about that. The town manager worked with others to get a state grant for $80,000 and the town meeting appropriated 20 to get them started. Now that was several years ago, and now they want another $100,000, uh, in which they want more years to try, basically have to double the number of rides to even break even. Fellow town meeting members, providing subsidies to private corporations is not a core mission of this town. It shouldn't even be on the radar screen. It's a direct hit to the taxpayer uh, in the next override. I urge a no vote on Article 60. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. Uh, so we're at the 25 minute mark into debate. Uh, so let's just take a, a quick straw poll just to see what the interest is in terminating debate. So if, uh, again, this is a non-binding uh, straw poll just to gauge interest. Uh, so if you're, that's, I see raise hands is enabled. Another number of hands have gone up. If you are interested in, if you would be interested uh, in, term, in in seeing debate terminated and getting to a vote on this article, uh, I just ask that you um, participate in the straw poll by raising your hand in Zoom. So we'll just give, uh, just give another uh, 20 seconds since folks have uh, already gotten a number of hands up. Um, and I look at the number and uh, if it's over 75%, then we'll do something, something different, 10 seconds. Uh, five seconds, and let's see. So we have 117. So we have. I gotta get my denominator right. Okay, so so we would. So we're short of that mark uh, to. Uh, Apologies, let's go faster next time. Uh, we're only about 54% that have raised hands. So we'll, we'll continue to be. Um, okay, so let's take, uh, so based on the, my historical speaking uh, 
list information. Uh, we had a number of appearances from Mr. Tremblay last time. He spoke about 10 minutes total. Uh, so uh, we have a point of order from Mr. Wagner. So let's take that first and then we'll get back to the speaking queue. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. I continue to be very concerned that although I trust you and trust the officials of the town of Arlington, I really think that particularly if this were contentious, 74%, uh, 76% or something like that, the town meeting members working for the residents yeah, of Arlington- I'd like to cut you off right there because this is the same point you made earlier. I believe I've yes, covered yes. this, I've addressed this. And if there was a discrepancy, we would see that come out in the official vote after the straw poll. And, and if you're saying that you, you don't trust what I'm doing, I mean, there's not much I could do to help you with that. And it is backed up, it is backed up, by, it is backed up by the official vote, which would be taken afterwards. And that is out in the open and that's the same voting system that we're using every other time for every official vote. Uh, so I consider this matter closed. Thank you. That's Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, we have a point of order from Mr. Fosca. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Charles Fosca, Precinct 10. I was uh, on the speaker list just behind the Mr. Tosti, and now there are two people ahead of me uh, after he spoke. Well, how did that happen? Uh, in my view of the speaker list, I saw um, I saw Mr. Tremblay after Mr. Tosti. So I suspect what happened is that perhaps your view of the portal had a stale view uh, because I, I don't remember whether or not I saw Mr. Palmer also in there, but I did definitely see uh, Mr. Tremblay after Mr. Tosti. Um, Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, and so, yeah, there's other reports that the speaker list changed substantially. Um, and so there's kind of differing reports. We'll, we'll, we'll have folks look into that to see if there's uh, uh, something that might be going with the order of the speaking queue. But I do know on mine, it, it does seem consistent from what I saw before, from what I remember. Thank you. Um, and also, yeah, yeah, leave it at that. And so, um, as I was saying, uh, Mr. Tremblay had a, a number of speaking appearances last time, totaling about 10 minutes. So I do want to take, kind of spread that wealth to other folks to get some speaking time. Uh, so let's take uh, Mr. Palmer next. Uh, Maxwell Palmer, Precinct 2. Uh, I was going to make a motion to terminate debate, but given the straw poll, um, we should wait on that. Okay, so you're going to pass on that? Okay. I'll pass. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's uh, go to Mr. Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10. And <clears throat> for the record, I'm speaking as a town meeting member, not as the chair of the Finance Committee. I have several points that I would like to make. Uh, this article provides money, town money, to a private corporation, a subsidiary of Lyft, that can't seem to generate its required revenue on a commercial basis on its own. Secondly, um, the article provides town money for the benefit of a few people who more than likely can afford or even now own their own bicycles in any event. Third, this is a discretionary spend. It's $100,000 that's not needed to be spent. It, asks, it adds to our cumulative deficit, as um, was mentioned by an earlier speaker, that's going to drive us to over $7 million deficit in uh, fiscal 25, forcing an override vote in calendar 2024. This is an example of living beyond our means. In the interest of fiscal probity, our new superintendent of schools and the, uh, the um, uh, finance director of schools, the CFO, gave a presentation uh, a few nights ago on how they rigorously reorganized, strategized, and reallocated their efforts in order to contain the size of their budget. And, and in other departments have done the same. Town meetings should not be spending $100,000 for bicycles in the current circumstances. I respectfully request that town meeting vote against this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Let's take Mr. Quinn next. Good evening, Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. Um, I am a longtime bicyclist, bicycle commuter, and I am very appreciative of the monies the town has spent on promoting bicycling in town through many of the safety improvements that have taken place in recent years. I think it's really, really a substantially good thing uh, that the town has done and an excellent use of resources. 
there is nothing about this proposal to spend $100,000 on these non-pedal assisted blue bikes that'll only be pretty much on Mass Ave and down in flat areas, benefiting at most a small number of people uh, for a business that's, a, a, that's seeking to make a profit. I, if the town is gonna spend money on, on promoting bicycling, which I hope it does, I just don't think this is the right way to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Uh, let's take Mr. Oster next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Adam Oster, Precinct 3. Um, I'm a little puzzled by all of this sudden railing about, you know, giving money to a private corporation. I think that if you look in our budget, you will see that uh, we buy a lot of goods and services from private corporations. Um, seems a little bit to me, you know, like waving the bloody shirt and not really appropriate. That said, I want to say that I consider this program to be an experiment. Um, uh, I think that the use case for it, although it's real, uh, may be weaker here in Arlington, where uh, more people own their own bikes and, and use them. But the only way to find out is to give this thing uh, a shot. If this were uh, a proposal that we do this, you know, I guess it's 50000 uh, per year I indefinitely, I'd be very skeptical about it. I'll also share with the meeting that uh, on the other uh, I motion to uh, to include advertising, um, I voted against that uh, because I don't think that this is important enough to do that, but that's just my opinion. Um, the benefits of this program, uh, uh, if successful, uh, accrue mostly to commuters, but not exclusively to cyclists, because what it does is it takes them off the road um, and uh, and eases the commute for everybody. So I think that the, the bikes are proving to be uh, a good solution to the last mile problem in a lot of locations. And I'm in favor of continuing this subsidy, and it is a subsidy for another two years as requested. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great. Thank you, Mr. Oster. And just as a public service announcement, I just want to remind folks on the speaking queue that uh, you can remove yourselves from the speaker queue if you wish to uh, by clicking the same button that you pressed to request to speak. Uh, that, that could save us some time from coming up to say that you actually don't have anything to, to say anymore. Um, and we have a point of order from Mr. Foskett. Let's take that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Lacking other, any other way to draw your attention, uh, this is actually a point of uh, what I consider a personal privilege. Okay. I resent the fact that my argument was described as waving the bloody shirt. That's uh, not a reference that I think is appropriate at town meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I have to agree with that, Mr. Foster. I, I didn't interpret it as directly uh, uh, targeted at you, but I see how it can certainly be interpreted that way. Uh, so I appreciate you pointing that out. Thank you. That, that we don't have a button for raising a, uh, a point of personal privilege. Uh, so if, if in cases like that, Mr. Foskett is within his rights uh, to uh, to use the point of order button for that as a substitute. Um, so just so everyone knows that they can use the point of order in cases like that if they feel that uh, they've been disparaged um, personally. Um, okay, so let's now, uh, let's uh, take, uh, we have a point of order for, or, or a point of uh, personal privilege by uh, Mr. Quinn. Let's take that. Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. I share the same concern Mr. Foskett raised, and I don't understand um, how this is happening. Uh, we should be more civil. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's take Mr. Tremblay next. And Mr. Tremblay, thank you for your patience, uh, hanging out in the pole position of the queue. Name and precinct. Let's see, is Mr. Tremblay able to connect? Uh, someone on the panel is telling me that he's not present in Zoom. Okay, so well, let's uh, take another, we'll see if he comes back. 
Uh, we'll take uh, Nick Pre uh, Pretzer next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Zavid Pretzer, Precinct 17. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, as someone who does own a bicycle, I find that Blue Bikes enables me to bicycle notably more by enabling one-way trips and other trips to places that might not otherwise uh, be convenient to bring my personal bicycle to without a car. Um, so I do find that the Blue Bike system uh, enables me to do more errands and replace more uh, car travel with bicycle. And I think, um, I think that's really important as we try to move to more sustainable forms of transportation. The town spends lots of money supporting people who uh, commute by car or travel by car. I think it's also uh, very valuable to spend some money to further support uh, the ability to people of people to use bicycles for errands and commuting. And I encourage um, supporting this article. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Wiener next. Laura Wiener, Precinct 8. I'm in support of this article. Blue Bikes provides a critical connection to a larger regional network. It connects the town and its residents to Somerville, Cambridge, Boston, Watertown, and Newton, and soon Medford is going to be joining the system. It connects us to Mount Auburn Hospital and area universities, and also provides access to the Minuteman Bikeway and all the area's greenways. It, it is also used for recreation as well as commuting. And um, I think Arlington is known for having a, a great bikeway that's, um, that people want to use outside of Arlington. It's expensive to operate and yet affordable to its riders. There's an equity component that provides income eligible memberships. I believe this system has not yet hit its stride and will continue to grow with more users. Um, and I believe it is worth the investment for the next two years. Is there anything else, Ms. Wayne? No. Nope. Oh, it seems like you're, are you, are you muted? Okay. okay. No, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take Mr. Moore next. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have what I hope is a simple question. Of the $100,000 we're thinking about appropriating here, what fraction of it goes to expanding our footprint, so new stations, versus uh, support for the program because we don't have enough writers? Okay, uh, Ms. Rate, do you have an answer to that question? Jennifer Ray, Director of Planning and Community Development. About 60% uh, um, would be related to expansion and the remainder to the other activities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at $20,000 a year, I think this is a really sensible thing to do. And if the expansion of the uh, footprint improves ridership, it probably will be less than that going forward. So I view this as a very sensible thing to do to um, kickstart this program, which hopefully will become self-sustaining in the future. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take Ms. Babiars next. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Moderator, Josephine Babiars, Precinct 15. My concern about this, um, apart from the very eloquent discussions by Mr. Tosi and Mr. Foskett, is that we have insufficient data to actually analyze who can best use this program. It would not be workable for me to have used on a commute because as a teacher, I have to carry too much stuff back and forth. And I think that the number of the the number, the amount of money that would be spent does not reflect a broad swath of Arlington people, of Arlington residents. Uh, I don't know of a lot of elders who would be using this and certainly elementary school children. I live very close to Bishop. Um, anyone I, who is riding a bike is usually accompanied by a parent. So I would urge that we not go down a zip car type road, but to vote against it. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. 
Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Garber next. Hello, Judith Garber, Precinct 4. I'm in support of this article. Uh, I agree with the, one of the previous speakers that it's not so much to me that we're subsidizing a corporation, but we're paying for a service. Uh, it's very convenient and also very, very cheap compared to almost every other form of transportation. It's only $120 for an annual pass for unlimited trips. And that's like only a little bit more than a, just one month to take the tea. So I think it's incredibly convenient. Um, but like um, Laura said, um, the more docks there are, uh, the more convenient it becomes. So right now, all, almost all the docks are just in East Arlington in the center. Um, so if we can expand to the heights where there actually seems like there's less public transportation, that would make it so much more convenient for folks living in the heights. Um, I've also heard that the MBTA is closing some bus lines in Arlington. While I'm not a fan of that change, this does create a need for other forms of transportation. Um, so I really hope that we give this program uh, an extended chance um, and let it pick up speed, so to speak. Uh, to close the program now, I think, would be a real shame. Uh, as a longtime user of Blue Bikes, I really don't know what I'd do without them. It's, it's been really amazing to help get to other bus lines and T lines. So I do hope that we will fund this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great. Thank you, Ms. Garber. Uh, let's take Ms. Hyam next. Leba Heim, Precinct 15. I move to terminate debate on the article and all matters before it. Thank you. So we have a motion to terminate debate on Article 60. Uh, and we have a second by Mr. Hamlin. Um, so let's bring up voting on terminating debate. Um, FYI, we're at the 14 minute mark from when we took the straw poll, just for anyone who's in uh, interested. Um, Okay, so we have we have the wave-based voting by precincts uh, enabled, so like, like we've done in, in the past several meetings. Uh, so if you see a message that your voting controls will be enabled in two more waves or in the next waves, just sit tight and it'll open up uh, in, in several seconds. And so if you are in favor of terminating debate on Article 60, uh, you want to vote yes. And if you want to continue debate, then vote no. Coming up on 200 votes cast. Uh, still have several more that we're waiting on. Please get your votes in as soon as you can. All the waves of voting uh, are, are open now. So please get your votes in. Sooner we get enough folks, folks voting, the, the sooner we can uh, close voting. And again, if you're interested in terminating debate on Article 60, uh, uh, vote yes, and if you want to continue debate, please vote no. Okay. There's only about 10 votes left of folks who've been active in the portal recently, so let's just give another 15 seconds before we close voting. Again, this is for termination of debate on Article 60. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. This is a two thirds vote and we are, uh, and debate is terminated with 189 votes in the affirmative, 28 in the negative and three abstentions, 87% um, debate is terminated. So we're not gonna wait for the screens uh, for termination of debate votes. Uh, we're just gonna go straight to the voting on Article 60 itself, the main motion. And this is a majority vote for Article 60. Once voting uh, is enabled and your wave has come up and you're able to vote, uh, 
vote yes if you're in favor of a two-year subsidy uh, for the Blue Bikes program totaling $100,000 with the program to be reevaluated after two years. Vote no if you don't want to appropriate $100,000 for this program. Okay, the waves are still kind of rolling out. So if you see a message about your voting patrols will be enabled in the next wave or in two more waves, just please sit tight and they will open up shortly and you will soon be able to vote. And so we're voting again on the main motion for article 60. for the uh, appropriation for blue bikes. If you're in favor of the two-year subsidy for the program totaling $100,000 with the program to be reevaluated after two years, then vote yes. Uh, if, you are, uh, uh, if you are not in favor of this appropriation, then vote no. Okay, we now have over 200 votes cast. We have 15 folks, 12 folks now who've been recently active in the portal but have not yet voted. If you have not voted yet, um, please vote now. If, if you're having trouble voting through the portal for any reason, you can cast your vote. Uh, you can type your vote into the Q&A and we'll take it from there. Okay, that's, um, that's just a handful of folks. Let's, let's just wait another uh, 20 seconds until we close voting on the main motion for Article 60. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And motion passes. This is a majority vote. And we have 144 in, uh, in the affirmative, 76 in the negative, and four abstentions, 65.5% of the vote. And so Article 60 passes. So we will just wait for the precinct screens to cycle through. We'll do that for the main motions and subsidiary motions. We will not, do, we will not wait for these screens uh, when we're simply terminating debate. Okay, so let's now go to article. Oh, just lost my place. So article 62 is an appropriation for the Community Preservation Fund. And let's bring up. Uh, Uh, let's bring up Ms. Rowe um, as the chair of the Community uh, Preservation Act Committee uh, to speak on this. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Clarissa Rowe, Precinct 4. Um, the committee would like to share some information. If you could put up the screen, please. Thanks so much. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Alexander helped me put this um, presentation together and I want to thank him for that. The committee, um, next slide please. This is for fiscal year 2023, next slide please. Um, the Community Preservation Act for new town meeting members is um, deals with historic preservation, open space and recreation and community or affordable housing. Next slide please. We have to every year spend at least 10% on open space 10% on historic and 10% on housing. The other 65% is um, flexible. Next slide, please. 
Um, I'm now gonna talk about 14 projects. They total about $3.4 million total. And we've had a banner year for CPA funding from the state and we're very pleased. This is a very necessary project in Mononymy Manor. It's window replacement for $600,000. Um, this is the first of two years, and it's a tremendously important project for the um, residents. Next slide, please. Um, this is a um, $16,290 um, homelessness prevention program done by the Somerville Homeless Coalition. The money is spent for Arlington um, people and they have done a wonderful job and we're very grateful for their being part of the town. Um, next slide, please. The um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund, we have put in $250,000 to get it started. We've been working very, there are two um, committee members, Dave Swanson and, and Sue Doctorow have been working with the Affordable um, Housing Trust trustees and we um, are delighted to be doing this. Next slide, please. This is the second phase of herd field renovations for $664 and $244. It's the um, not very glamorous, next slide, please, but important things like um, lighting and some of the work that didn't get done in the first phase. There may in fact be a third phase that deals with the um, the brook that goes underneath the field, but we don't know that yet. Next slide, please. This is more of what it looks like now. Next slide, please. Um, Robbins Farm Playground for 997.993 is, as everybody knows, a regional draw. It's a wonderful playground. And although the slides have been um, replaced a number of times, this is a very important community asset. Next slide, please. The, we have a couple of um, projects this year that deal with some of the sort of forgotten areas um, in town, Mount Galboa, um, a fe feasibility study for the Conservation Commis Commission for $57,000 to figure out how the house on the land that we um, preserve should be used and there are many different ideas. I think this is a very good expenditure of money. Next slide, please. And again, here's another um, sort of hidden away treasure of Arlington, the Cooks Hollow. And we're doing um, a restoration feasibility study for $70,000 um, with the conservation land stewards. It's um, a place right near senior housing and I think it's a well worth um, the project cost. Next slide, please. The Jarvis House um, Preservation and Restoration, where the Town of Arlington Legal Department is housed, is for $190,000. And as you can see from the chimney, it's, <laughs> it's necessary, it will be some exterior painting and some chimney reserva uh, preservation and also some mechanical systems to make the house livable in the summer. Next slide, please. Um, the Dallin Museum came to us um, wanting to preserve their collections and um, they would get a $31,000, whoops, $31,785 um, grant. You can see the current conditions and there are an awful lot of wonderful things in that museum and we will like to honor that um, request. Next slide, please. Um, the Covenant Church Excel, um, Accessibility Improvements is um, for a church in the Heights. And you can see on the picture on the left, it, it's in a very steep area. The front door is very hard to get to if you're handicapped. Um, I happen to be handicapped myself, so I know how hard it is to get there. And they wanna work on that and also on making two of the um, ground floor bathrooms accessible. Next slide, please. Um, again, more preservation um, record uh, records being taken care of, the historic planning records, and they will be digitized. And this is a wonderful use of 
money. We hope that the planning department's um, preservation project will be used by other departments in the town. And it's small money to start preserving some of the wonderful records that we have. Next slide, please. Uh, Ms. Rowe, just FYI, we're at about the six minute mark. So is, is that, if you can wrap okay. it up. No, I'll be more. quick. Um, right. Old Schwab Mill, north and west sides, $20,000. Jason Russell House, another grant for 150, 8116. Um, and that's for two other sides of the building. Next slide, please. And um, a last minute request from the Hauser Building um, electrical panel upgrade for 2,203. 280. This is um, a result of what happened at Chestnut Manor, where the electrical panels failed, and this is some proactive work. Next slide, please. And this is the total. It's three million four 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 nine zero four, and we have a very small sixty eight thousand um, dollar appropriation for the administrative expenses. So thank you very much for your patience. I've tried to um, go quickly through the slides and I'm here to help the moderator ask, um, answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we're just a hair over seven minutes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so let's now go to the speaking queue. Let's take uh, Ms. Bloom first. Ms. Bloom, name and precinct. A uh, question regarding the Hauser. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, name and precinct first. Nancy Bloom, precinct 18. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. I had a question regarding the uh, electric, the upgrades on the electrical panels for the Hauser building. It, I got the impression that that's an emergency. Is that is that going to be, can that wait until July or is it something that has to be done sooner or can, can it be done sooner? Uh, Ms. Rowe, is that an emergency or is that something that could be? Um, it is. It, it's not an emergency because the housing authority has been very proactive about um, replacing the panels in the Chestnut Hill, Chestnut Manor building. And they're also being pro proactive. This is a way of helping them out. Um, this is the, that building, the Hauser building ha runs completely on electricity. And the, um, so the elevators, all the kitchen work, everything runs on electricity. So in that way it is, I see what you're saying about emergency, but this was an emergency application that came at the last minute. We can't we can't give them money before it's authorized. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Great. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Rudiman next. Name and precinct, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. I'd like to ask through you if someone has the information on, uh, well, 20 years ago, uh, the Community Preservation Act was inaugurated and the promise was that the state would match 100% of the monies raised by the participating cities <laughs> and towns. Can I ask you to ask someone, do we have the information, what is the current rate of match that the state provides? Sure, based on Ms. Rowe's chuckle, I think she might wanna field this question, Ms. Rowe? Yes, um, actually, Mr. Ruderman, the, it was never anticipated that the state would need it 100%. Um, it was hoped to meet it 27% were the original projections. I happen to know that because I was on the group of people that started it. But um, I understand we're now, I believe, at 37% um, uh, match, but I will defer to my Mathematicians Julie Wayman and Jim Feeney, if I'm wrong. Okay, uh, Ms. Wayman. 40, uh, 44 percent. Great. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, additionally, um, is the state planning any actions as it did in 2019 by an across-the-board increase in all fees levied at registries of deeds to increase the match rate, which was promised? 20 years ago to be 100%. We were both in the town meeting when it happened. Are there any plans <laughs> at the state level to, to increase that match rate? Uh, Ms. Rohr, do you have an answer to Ms. Mr. Ruderman's detail? Yes, I do. Um, I also, besides being the chair of this Arlington one, I used to be the chair of the statewide group. Um, no, there are no plans to. 
Thank you. Final question, Mr. Moderator. How does retrofitting uh, the internal uh, facilities of a church fall into one of these buckets of historic preservation, open space, or housing? Uh, Ms. Rowe? Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Um, we were expecting this. I'm not asking for myself. I am asking for the meeting. Of course you are. Of course you are. And I believe um, Doug Heim, our town council, um, will answer that question. Um, it is a question about, um, you know, why are we spending public funds on a private entity? That it's a historic preservation project as well as an accessibility project. We have done a lot of accessibility projects, but I will now defer to Doug Heim. Uh, Mr. Heim. Good evening, Doug Heim, Town Council. Council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, the, 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 the short version of this is that uh, the, a good analogy might be the Old North Church. Uh, the historic significance of these buildings um, sometimes uh, uh, provides a resource to the town, uh, but oftentimes these types of projects uh, pose an actual challenge for offering the public use that things like the Community Preservation Act require. So um, in order to receive certain types of grants and funds, uh, these types of buildings need to be accessible so that folks, uh, of, that, that folks within the public can appreciate them and use them, not just as a house of worship, but as a historic resource. So that's that's a, a big part of the the answer, I, Ms. Rowe. I think you're suggesting that I could talk at length about the Kaplan decision or the no. Lutheran Church. I, I, th I don't think we need to. Um, well. One of the th yeah, one of the things that the committee does um, for the for the meeting is we require that any kind of um, project that we're dealing with is open to the public at all times. And for instance, the Jason Russell House or the old Schwab Mill. There are community programs that are run all the time in both those places, as there are in the church. And those photographs of the church, the, the church were taken during the opening of the Housing Corporation of Arlington's opening of their um, units across the street. It's a very welcoming place. And if Mr. Ruderman would like, I could introduce the pastor, Zach Williams, or um, the architect, Don Mills, who are both here to talk about the programs of the church. Uh, Mr. Ruderman, it's your call if you want to yield your time to those speakers. I don't think the, uh, the, the property in this case rises anywhere near the level of the two properties that were previously cited, both on the National Register of Historic Places and inventoried by Arlington's Historical Commission. I think this, is, this one's a mistake. And um, we're not being asked to do, please. And we're not being asked to vote on anything but the bottom, but the bottom number of the budget. But I think the inclusion of of Covenant Church is a mistake, and that concludes my remarks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Leahy next. Lori Leahy, Precinct Twenty One. Um, I agree with Michael, Mr. Ruderman, um, that this does seem, I guess I could say, out of scope <laughs> um, as a person who doesn't practice religion. And often I am at odds with uh, beliefs of certain religions. I And I, I do know that this particular church is like a, I, I wouldn't say a chain, but it's in other places. Um, they also run a daycare. Um, so they are making money if they are a nonprofit. And so I'm just curious as to why they couldn't raise their own funds. Um, if someone could address that. Is this a question you'd like to direct to um, uh, like the members of that church or the, the folks uh, who um, run the church? Well, or? probably Ms. Rowe could answer that. I would okay. think she can, um, she could. Sure. Ms. I think Ms. I can. Mm -hmm. This is the first church in Arlington that has been, has applied for Community Preservation Act funding. Um, the other communities all over the Commonwealth have applied. Boston has done a number of churches and Cambridge has, and it's well used. It's a 
it's and one of the things it's it is part of a historic district and i understand about the religious purpose that's why we looked very carefully at how this met all the criteria and we consulted not only with mr hyam but also with the um, community preservation coalition to make sure that we were crossing all the i's and dotting the t's but we uh, excuse have... me i'm sorry i'm just I, I don't think you're answering the question of why okay. they raise their own money okay well i'm i'm not privy to that i think we should ask the pastor or um or um don mills they're both here to talk uh, if Ms. Leahy, it's, your, okay? it's your call if you want to give your time to the pastor of the church um, sure, a little bit of my time is fine. Yes, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, let's take up, uh, take, um, I don't know if it's Mr. Mills or Reverend Mills. I apologize for not knowing your title. No, it's it's Pastor Zach um, Phillips. Oh, uh, uh, Pastor Phillips, okay. I would also, you... if, I, if, yeah, if I can just ask first, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Pastor Phillips, are, are you a resident of Arlington? I am, yes. Um, sorry, I hope you can understand my voice. I've been having vocal problems lately. But yes, uh, my okay. name is Zach Phillips, and I am a resident of Arlington. Okay, just, uh, uh, yeah, just name and uh, address, please, and then uh, feel free to speak. Oh, sure. sure. My personal address is 11 Eustace Street uh, in, in the Heights, and uh, the church's address is 9 Westminster Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So there were a couple of, of questions there is the, is the basic question. Um, I think Ms. Ms. Rowe addressed the first part is the basic question why we can't pay with our own funds for the uh, renovation. I believe yes. that was the question. Ms. Leahy, is that the question? That is. Um, I, I would just say a couple of things. First of all, this church is, is not part of, of a chain. We're a non-denominational church. I mean, we are affiliated with a group of churches, but not in any sort of uh, chain or denominational type way. And we also don't, don't run a daycare. Um, there is a school uh, that used to be run by the church that uh, has been split off as an independent entity and uh, runs itself and rents space from us in the building. Um, so, you know, in terms of uh, church, we um, applied for the funds for all of the reasons that Ms. Rose stated. Um, we are a small church um, and it would, you know, be difficult uh, to, to engage in uh, that sort of, of project. And our hope is just to be able to use funds, again, not for the purpose of, of, of evangelizing or religious purposes or anything else, but our understanding of the application, uh, as was already mentioned, is to um, upkeep this historic building and to uh, serve the public in a great way in doing so. And that's okay, thank you. part of our hope, sure. Thank you. I guess I, I will just finish by saying that um, I happen to be the lucky winner of a, um, and I'm actually very grateful to have it, a historic house in a historic district. Um, and so I, anything I do to my house, I need to um, do according to the rules. And I do have to pay for it myself. So I, I do feel, I, I realize that we can't just take a, a piece out of the budget and vote on it. So, um, but I do appreciate the answers to some of the questions. Um, and I guess that's about it. Thank you very much. Mr. Moderator, I want to clarify um, a couple of things. First of all, uh, Ms. Rose, is this, on... is, well, this is part of Ms. Leahy's time. Oh, I'm uh, time. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, uh, but if other folks do have questions for you, I'm happy to, uh, to bring call you back. Let's take Mr. Quinn next. Sure. And I will have a question for Ms. Rowe. I don't know if it speaks to what she's asking about, though. Okay. Um, Name and precinct? Uh, Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. I was looking at this year's Community Pressure Preservation um, Act um, report, and uh, last year we approved $249,625 to put in ground source heat pumps at the Jason Russell House, and I have been trying to find an update on how this project is coming along. Um, it's one that I think is could be of interest to a lot of people, frankly. Um, 
but I don't know where to go to get that. And I'm hoping Ms. Rowe either is able to provide that or at least uh, point me in the right direction. Ms. Rowe? Absolutely. It is very successful. Um, I watched them drill the um, drill of the wells. It's now hooked up. And I will, um, Michael, if you put your Q&A, in the Q&A, you put your email, I will get you in touch with the right people. I'm sure they would love to give you a tour of it. Um, thank you. I have some, and from a personal perspective, I teach a course in environmental economics and I'll probably use it for that as well. Thank you Great. very much. Wonderful. And, uh, that's all I need for my time. Okay, let's take Ms. Heim next. Leba Heim, Precinct 15. I move to terminate debate and move the question. Okay, so we have a motion to terminate debate by Ms. Heim. Do we have a second? Let's see, we have a second from Mr. Siano. Um, okay, so let's uh, uh, bring up a vote to terminate debate on Article 62. Uh, just FYI, that happened to be at the 22 minute mark um, into debate. Okay, so voting is now opening up for termination of debate on Article 62 uh, for community preservation funding. Uh, this is just the vote to terminate debate, not on the, not the main motion. So if you are interested in terminating debate, please vote yes. If uh, you wanna continue debate on Article 62, the Community Preser Preservation Act funding, vote no. And if you're having trouble voting in the portal, you can uh, type your vote into the Q&A. Okay, and while we're waiting for votes to come in, uh, th there was a question in the Q&A about whether um, we could have like, whether the the the, mo the main motion, I'll, I'll I'll translate it into kind of I, I think the, the the proper language. Can the main motion be uh, uh, amended? And uh, as is always the case, uh, speakers from the speaker queue are free to move to amend or to substitute the main motion uh, at any time. And it's ultimately my discretion as moderator uh, to determine, or my my determination, I should say, as moderator uh, whether. Uh, such motion is within scope, depending on the, the specifics and the nature of that motion. Okay, so we have 215 votes in, and let's say about 12 votes outstanding from folks uh, who have been recently active in the portal. Let's just give another 15 seconds until we close voting on termination of debate, of Article 62, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting on termination of debate for Article 62. And uh, debate is terminated. 164 votes uh, in the affirmative, 55 in the negative, three abstentions at 74.9%. Uh, um, we are not going to wait for the screens, uh, but we do have. We briefly had a point of order, but that has disappeared. So let's move now to voting on the main motion of Article 62. And this is a majority vote. Actually, we do have a point of order from uh, Ms. Mozina. So let's take that while voting is open. Um, so when Ms. Mozina comes up, uh, name and precinct, and please state your point of order. And while we're waiting for that point of order, uh, if you are interested in voting in favor of the Community Preservation Act funding, which this year covers um, uh, a total of uh, roughly $3.4 million in appropriations, then vote yes. Uh, if you are opposed to this, uh, this appropriation, you can vote no. Uh, Ms. Mazina, uh, name and precinct, yes. and, uh, can you state your point of order? 
Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Angel Muzina, Precinct 15. I suppose it's moot at this point. My question was gonna be if we could make a substitute motion prior to the vote being taken, um, I guess that's beyond the point now. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so it, it, it may be relevant if, uh, if actually, I'm sorry, we're already, we've already terminated the debate. So yeah, the, uh, uh, th that is a moot point, you're correct. So again, if you are in favor of the Community Preservation Act funding, uh, which this year cover uh, the totals about $3.4 million in appropriations, vote yes. If you are opposed to this funding, uh, you can vote no. Okay, we have a point of order from Ms. Benedict. Let's take that. Oh, I withdrew my point of order, sorry. Okay. okay, we have a point of order from Ms. Hyam. This is a very popular article for points of order. Lee Hyam, Precinct 15. Um, I just wanted to remind our body that we do have the 48 hour rule on um, amendments that are substantial to the article. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so there, so I can clarify that there is a, um, uh, it's not quite a point of order. It's a point of information, which isn't technically a thing procedurally, but um, uh, th there is a 48-hour uh, a rule um, in place, which means that I ask that you put uh, uh, any motions to amend or to substitute uh, a main motion in writing and give it to me, town council, town clerk, uh, at least 48 hours in advance so we can kind of vet it and process it and share it with folks so town meeting members can be prepared when they come to the meeting to vote on it um, and discuss it. Um, that, but the, that, that's just a practice uh, that, that I follow as moderator, as my predecessor did. And, uh, but the actual rules are that motions can be made from the floor uh, and uh, I can rule them out of, uh, out of scope. Um, and so it is ultimately uh, like my, my call on that. It's kind of different layers of rules uh, in place. Okay, so let's see, where are we at with voting? Um, almost all the votes are in at this point. Let's just take uh, another 15 seconds before we close voting. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And someone did mention in the Q&A that you can divide a question. Uh, if you're interested in that, you could read town meeting time for the details or have a conversation with me offline. And the motion passes, 194 in the affirmative, 25 in the negative, and eight abstentions. Uh, article 60, the main motion for Article 62, Appropriation of Com Community Preservation Fund uh, uh, funding uh, passes. So we... We will wait through these screens so that everyone could view the votes. And when that is done, we will move on to Article 65. But before we take up that article, we will take a uh, 10 minute break since we're just about at the halfway mark tonight. Um, so let's just finish these screens. Okay. And so um, let's come back at 940. Uh, we'll reconvene. And um, at that point, we'll have already article 62 up and we'll introduce it and uh, jump into debate. Okay. See everyone in about 10 minutes. Thanks. With article 65. Let's get that up.
Okay, and while we're bringing that up, this uh, this is from the uh, Finance Committee report. Uh, Mr. Foskett, did you want to uh, speak to the vote? On, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, make a couple of comments. <clears throat> um, the Finance Committee voted for these design standards because the guidelines uh, that are proposed will be helpful for uh, architects and developers to understand the appropriate way to develop uh, new projects along Mass Avenue and Broadway. With the guidelines in place, uh, development costs should be lower and development time shorter because of uh, the implied simplification of the special permitting process required by the town. In other words, if the developers know and the architects know what the town is interested in, the, the process should be more streamlined. And finally, the guidelines also enhance the town's execution and implementation of the Arlington Master Plan. I think uh, if people have more uh, interest in, in more detailed questions, I'm sure a representative of the Arlington Redevelopment Board or the Planning Department can provide a more detailed description. Okay. And so this was initially on the consent agenda. It was um, removed from the consent agenda by Ms. Friedman. So if, uh, I mean, a courtesy I've been giving folks is that if they removed a, a, an article from the consent agenda, I wanted to give them uh, an opportunity to speak to why they removed it. Um, uh, so if uh, we could bring up um, uh, Ms. Friedman next. Uh, name and precinct, please. Beth Ann Friedman, precinct 15. Um, we've had a number of <clears throat> consultants talk about how to bring business to Mass Ave and Broadway. And I was wondering what this additional sum of 50,000 um, was, you know, what the purpose of that, whether it was really going to add to the information we already had. If somebody could address that. Okay. Is, um, uh, Mr. Foskett? Yes, I, uh, I believe that this is, the guidelines are a, a set of documents or suggestions as to what the facade, what the buildings should look like along the, the Mass Avenue and um, Broadway. And as opposed to, you know, somebody coming in and building a 20 story building with uh, red brick as, a, as opposed to a consistent design that the master plan would like to see. Ms. Friedman? Um, all right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll take uh, uh, Ms. Evans next. Name and precinct, please. Uh, let's see. While we're waiting to bring Ms. Evans up, oh, I, I do see that. Uh, uh, can Ms. you hear me now? Yes, I can. Just hold on one second. One thing I skipped here is uh, I did want to. Uh, uh, Ms. Rate does have a video, and usually, part of the introduction, I would show this, and I apologize that I skipped over that. Uh, Ms. Uh, can we play uh, uh, Ms. Rate's video? Or I think it might have been from Ms. Zemberry um, from the ARB. Uh, can we bring up uh, the presentation, the the, uh, the video recording for Article sixty five? Yeah. Apologies for not playing this first. And then we'll take uh, Ms. Evans. Hello, after I'm this. Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, also known as the ARB, and I will be taking you through Warren Article sixty five requested appropriation for the design standards for the 2022 Arlington Town Meeting. The purpose of this appropriation is to update the existing design standards for commercial and industrial uses for applicability and usability by the Redevelopment Board. Prior design standards were, re were created and approved in 2015 with the adoption of the Master Plan. Unfortunately, the ARB has found that the existing design standards provide limited applicability due to their focus on new development, larger lots, with, and without specific guidance related to existing neighborhood conditions. This update would provide specific design guidance for redevelopment in all areas of the ARB's purview. For example, the current design standards do not cover business districts along Broadway or Summer Street. 
As you can see from these illustrations, the current standards lack the flexibility to address a range of parcel sizes, parking requirements, uses, and our existing range of zoning districts. We are fortunate in our town to have two recent models for updated design standards, including the 2020 Residential Design Guidelines, which are limited to single and two-family properties in the R0, R1, and R2 districts, and the site design standards for the industrial districts that were codified at 2021 town meeting. The organizing principles of our current design standards are varied by corridor, with limited guidance provided for an applicant with regard to building setbacks, building height, facade treatments, and building materials. The model of the residential design guidelines provide a framework to address these types of elements. That model is contextually driven and organized by scale, which leads to improved design solutions. An example of this more comprehensive context and design guidelines that the ARB would like to have created for the business districts can be found in this example from the residential design guidelines. It proposes a specific design principle, followed by annotated diagrams and imagery, illustrating multiple types of applications across a variety of lot sizes and configurations. It is further supported by definitions and recommendations for types of design solutions that are both encouraged and discouraged. The updated design standards would apply to review of the development along Mass Ave, Broadway, Summer Street, and the development along the bikeway. This includes small to large scale mixed use development. This appropriation would allow for the creation of a necessary and worthwhile document that the Department of Planning and Community Development and the ARB would be able to use with owners and developers to improve the quality of design applications and solutions proposed for large scale projects under the ARB's purview. The creation of these design standards were identified as a 2022 goal by the ARB in our annual goal setting meeting. The Department of Planning and Community Development put forward this application on behalf of the ARB. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's um, go back to Ms. Evans and apologies for um, cutting away from your speaking time, but let's uh, go back to that now. Ms. Evans, uh, name and precinct, please. Thank you, Winnell Evans, Precinct 14. I have one very quick question. Um, would this, would the work that this grant, uh, that this appropriation cover rather, would this constitute an update of the existing 2015 design guidelines or would it in fact replace those design guidelines? So I think basically what I'm asking is, <clears throat> excuse me, how extensive would, the, um, would this new set be? Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ray, do you have an answer for Ms. Evans' question? Yes, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Ray, Director of Planning and Community Development. This would not be an update to the 2015 design standards. This would be brand new design standards and it would be a whole new process, similar to the process that we use for the residential design guidelines. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, um, uh, let's take Mr. Reblock next. Steve Revelak, Precinct 1. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I was just wondering, in the formulation of, in the process of hiring the consultant and formulating these new design documents, will there, there be a working group and possibly a public process behind it? Uh, Ms. Ray? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Ray, Director of Planning and Community Development. We would have the, the same type of process, again, as the Residential Design Guidelines, where we would have a working group who would help to develop the scope of work and interview potential um, uh, consultants who would help with the design process and then also participate in the entire design process. There would also be uh, public meetings as part of that. Um, so it would be, it would be a, a full community process um, in order to ultimately develop the final design standards, um, including of course, working very closely with the Arlington Redevelopment Board and other um, groups that have a role in review of design. I mean, it is about the redevelopment board, but these are buildings that relate to other um, boards and commissions that have purview over development as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Raid. So um, I was a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for about a year and a half, uh, speaking as uh, um, you know, myself rather than um, uh, for the ZBA. But I felt during that time that the residential design guidelines were extremely helpful. 
Um, I felt that they gave the ZBA a better context for evaluating special permit submissions. And they were also helpful in sort of conveying um, you know, desired aesthetics to architects. So we, we could sit down with an architect during a special permit hearing, and you know, we might refer to the you know residential design guidelines. And could you try something like this? And they'd come back, and you know, they they kind of got it. Um, it it made projects better. Um, you know, as a, as an ARB member, and again speaking as myself and not for the ARB, I would uh, I think this would also help our environmental design review process. Um, and, you know, since there will be a community process behind the, the formulation of these standards, I think it's also an opportunity for the public at large to weigh in on, you know, what they would like to see. So I hope we support this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's take Mr. Palmer next. Uh, Maxwell Palmer, Precinct 2, motion to terminate debate on this article and all matters before it. Okay, so Mr. Palmer has moved to terminate debate. Do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from Mr. McCabe. So let's bring up a vote. Uh, let's uh, open voting for termination of debate of Article 65. Okay. Okay, so voting will be open. Like the, the, the first wave should already be open. Uh, the second wave of voting should be opening up uh, shortly. And then there'll be a third wave of voting as usual by precinct. Um, and so we're voting here on whether to terminate debate on Article 65. So if you are in favor of terminating debate, uh, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. Again, this is a vote on whether to terminate debate on Article 65. Yes vote if you wish to terminate debate, a no vote if you wish to continue debate. Okay, we're nearing 200 votes cast, still several outstanding. When your wave opens up, please uh, be ready to vote. Okay, we're down to about 13 uh, town meeting members uh, who have 12 now who have been recently active in the portal but have not yet voted. So let's give folks, now it's down to 11. Let's just give another 15 seconds until we close voting on terminating debate. 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And debate is terminated. Again, this is a two thirds vote, 189 in the affirmative, 29 in the negative two abstentions. We're not gonna wait for the screens. We'll just go straight to voting on the main motion for article 65. So let's go straight into that. And the main motion uh, is a majority vote. If you are in favor of um, the uh, developing design standards uh, for enhancing the, the Mass Ave Broadway business uh, for vi vitality for $50,000, vote yes. If you are against that, you would vote no. And vote, uh, again, wave, uh, voting is op opening up by waves, so your wave might not be open yet. It might say, you might see a message in your portal, your voting portal saying uh, that you'll be able to vote in, in the next wave or in two waves. So just uh, please be patient and wait for that to open up. 
And while, while you're waiting, uh, I'll just read out the vote language. Um, this is for Article 65, appropriation for design standards. That the, uh, vote yes uh, if you're in favor of the vote language, which is that the sum of $50,000 be and hereby is appropriated for the purpose of funding development of design standards to enhance the economic vitality of Mass Ave and Broadway through attractive and consistent design in alignment with the Arlington Master Plan, including payment of consultant fees and furtherance of the process, said sum to be raised by general tax and expended under the direction of the town manager. And that was a nine to seven to one vote of the finance committee. Nine in favor, uh, seven opposed and one abstention. So if you're in favor of appropriating the, the sum of $50,000 uh, for funding development of design standards uh, for the economic, to enhance the economic vitality of Mass Ave and Broadway, uh, vote yes. If you are opposed uh, to that appropriation of $50,000, you would vote no. And again, this is a vote on the main motion of Article 65. Okay, we have most votes in. Uh, just a few left, so let's just wait another 15 seconds until we close voting on Article 65. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Last chance to get your votes in. And let's close voting. Remember, this is a majority vote. And the vote passes. Uh, 199 in the uh, affirmative, 27 in the negative, and one abstention. And because this is uh, a main motion, we will wait for the screens uh, for showing the votes of all precincts. And then after we're done viewing these voting screens, uh, we will move on to, so we, we are, we're done with the finance articles, the, the FinCom articles uh, that we're gonna cover tonight. Um, there are a couple more, articles 71 and 72, uh, but we're gonna leave those for a later time. And we are going to, uh, when Mr. Foskett, uh, after we're done looking at these screens, which we're now, uh, I, I would entertain a motion from Mr. Foskett to remove some articles from the table to go back to Article 17, for instance. Mr. Moderator, um, we could handle um, Articles uh, 71 and 72 this evening. Um, if I may take a moment, uh, Charles Foskett, yep. Precinct 10 and Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, mm -hmm. From a procedural basis, mm -hmm. uh, Article 49 has been tabled. Uh, we will have to introduce a substantial amendment to that uh, when certain um, collective bargaining issues are resolved. However, the total amount of money in Article 49 mm -hmm. uh, not change. So we are in a position then to go ahead and vote Article 71 and Article 72. Uh, and then we can take Article 49 off the table when the collective bargaining issues are resolved, which I hope will be by Monday night next week, or and we could then address it by Wednesday, giving you the, the 48 hour notice. Understood. Uh, uh, so let's uh, let's leave those mo th those articles on the table for now, and let's proceed uh, to Article seventy one. Um, thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So let's bring up uh, voting on Article. I'm not voting. Let's let, let's open up. Uh, uh, art, article seventy one is before us. So uh, let's um, let's introduce that now. Okay, so uh, Mr. Foskett, do you want to introduce Article 7? Yes, 70? thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, and Chair of the Finance Committee. So our, our, uh, Article 71 is to ask the meeting to appropriate uh, use of free cash to um, our revenue stream for fiscal 23. This, let me refresh the memory of uh, meeting members what the free cash actually is. This comes from, uh, this is the money that was left over and was unspent uh, at the end of fiscal 21. That, um, and that would be um, June 30th um, um, of, of uh, 21. 
And the, the, the reason why this hangs over for a year is that when we, it has to be, it has to be certified. And so it, by the state, so there's a delay. So we are now, we're looking at money that was left over the, the fiscal year prior to the last fiscal year. So um, the, the amount of money that was certified by the state was $11,078,430. It's been the practice of the town to use 50% of that uh, and apply it to, to the revenue in the upcoming fiscal year and to leave 50% in uh, free cash, uh, in the free cash account as a reserve. So the town meeting is being asked to vote $5,539,215 um, towards the um, use of the revenue in fiscal 23. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Uh, let's now move to our speaking queue. And so uh, let's take Mr. McCabe, who's our sole speaker. And I'll re remind Mr. McCabe and everyone else, if there are no other speakers in the speaker queue, we can proceed directly to voting. Mr. McCabe, whereas if there is a motion to terminate debate, we have to take that vote, if there's a second. Mr. McCabe, name and precinct. Uh, to, Mr. McCabe, are you able to unmute? Um, uh, shoot. Uh, I, uh, I think I can hear you. I think your microphone's active. Uh, name and precinct? Uh, Mark McCabe, precinct two. Terminate debate on article 71 and all matters before it. Okay. Um, do we have a second? We do have another, a second speaker in the queue. So, um, we do have a second from Ms. Hyam. So let's open voting on termination of debate. We have a motion by Mr. McCabe to terminate debate and a second by Ms. Hyam. Okay. And with our waves of voting, if you're able to vote in the first wave, please go ahead and vote. Uh, otherwise, you'll see a message on your screen saying that you'll be that voting will be enabled for you in the next wave or in two waves. And so you just have to sit tight and in several seconds, you will be able to vote. So if you're in the first wave, uh, please vote. And this is, uh, we're voting on whether to terminate debate on Article 71, use of free cash. Um, if you're in favor of terminating debate, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. Okay, we're just over 200 votes cast. Um, still several, several more that we're waiting for. If your uh, wave of precinct has, uh, has voting enabled, uh, please, please vote. They should be all open by now. Okay, we're still uh, waiting for votes from 17 folks who've been, 15 folks now who have been recently active in the portal. So please get your votes in. If you're having trouble voting through the portal, you could always vote through the, you can enter your vote, you type your vote into the Q&A. So that's just another, uh, let's see, another 15 seconds. 10 seconds till we close voting on terminating debate on Article 71. Five seconds. And let's close voting. 
This is a two thirds vote on whether to terminate debate. And debate is terminated. We're not gonna wait for the screens. It's 204 uh, in the affirmative, which is well over the two thirds threshold. So let's uh, open voting now on article 71, use of free cash. This is a majority vote. If you are in favor of use of free cash, um, and I will use um, um, Mr. Jameson's description from an email that he sent out, I think, to everybody. Um, uh, use of, this is for use of free cash, uh, appropriates one half of the state certified FY21 fiscal year 21, 2021 general fund year end balance to the fiscal year 2023 budget. And the remainder is held in reserve. If you are in favor of that, vote yes. If you are opposed, vote no. And this is a majority vote. <clears throat> See the, the waves of voting are probably still opening up. So if you're seeing a message that uh, voting will be enabled for you in the next wave or in the next two waves, just sit tight and, um, and that will auto refresh. And you will be able to vote uh, shortly. This is, we're voting on the main motion of Article 71, use of free cash. Okay, we now have over 200 votes cast. Um, all the waves of precincts should be open for voting now. So waiting for about 20 folks who've been recently active in the portal, but have not voted yet. So let's just wait a little bit longer. 10 people, it's not worth it. Okay, I think someone's on a hot mic. Might want to mute whoever that was. And so let's just wait another 15 seconds until we close voting. You could always enter it into the chat. Oh, I'm sorry, into the Q&A, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and close voting on Article 71. Okay, passes 219 in the affirmative, one in the, uh, the negative. Uh, we'll, we will wait for all the screens for this because it's the main motion. Article 71 passes. And after we're done with the screens and we're uh, just about halfway there, um, after this, we will take up Article 72. Okay, so let's open up Article 72 now, which is now before us. And this is also from the Finance Committee report. So Mr. Foskett, why don't you kick us off uh, introducing Article 72. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10 and Chair of the Finance Committee. I first would like to note uh, to the membership that we administratively changed the number on uh, page 30 of the Finance Committee report to $3,046,037, uh, some nights ago. So that's the, the number that we are voting on. Uh, secondly, I'd like to- I'm sorry, Mr. Foskett, where, where was that in the uh, Finance Committee report, just so folks can follow? It was along. on page 30, okay. uh, 72. We yep. made administrative change, uh, maybe the first or second night of town meeting. Okay. Yep, and, and did we show that on screen? Because if we did, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't think we need to show it again here. But. I, I don't think so. I think okay. we. I think it's been changed on the uh, agenda too. Okay, it's already been updated on the the annotated warrant online. I so. Okay. 
So I also wanted to reemphasize what I just mentioned, which is that while Article 49 is still on the table, the number of $1,323,572, which is in the article on the Finance Committee report on page 14, will not change. However, uh, when we take Article 49 off the table, there will be some language uh, distributing some of those funds to specific uh, bargaining units, contracts, and, um, and also asking the meeting to endorse those contracts. So that'll be a substantial amendment that will be coming up in the next week or so. And then the, the final comment I would make, make is that this money that we're voting here is uh, a two-thirds vote appropriating money from the override stabilization fund. And if the members look at Appendix D in the Finance Committee report on line F in, in revenues, you see the 3046037 in um, fiscal year 23 column. When, this, when the balances in this fund are depleted, that's when we go into a deficit situation, which right now is anticipated to occur in fiscal 25, and which means that in calendar 24, the town is going to be facing the need for substantial override, which, which I have mentioned before. So um, that really completes my comments. Uh, this requires a two thirds vote. And uh, thank you for your uh, time on this. And Mr. Fosca, just uh, to be clear, so I pulled up uh, Finance Committee report page 30. Uh, this is the sum of 2,946,037, is that correct? No. That we changed that number. Okay, it's, that was changed. I mean, can you give me that new number? Three, just so, yeah. yes, three million forty-six thousand zero thirty-seven. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go to our speaking queue. We have Mr. Jameson. Uh, name and precinct. Yes, Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, perhaps Mr. Foskett could um, elaborate on the reason for the increase. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Foskett? Yes, um, I can. Thank you. Uh, it was basically a, uh, an oversight on the part of the Finance Committee. The uh, Board of Assessors allocated um, $750,000 from the reserve, uh, overlay reserve surplus this year. And we... Um, we used um, 100,000 of it in the special town meeting and um, only 650,000 was available for the budget uh, as a general revenue source. And that meant that the, and we were originally considering using the entire 750,000 in the annual town meeting, but having used 100,000 of that in a special town meeting, we needed to increase the withdrawal from the override stabilization fund or well, officially called the fiscal stability stabilization fund. We had to increase that amount by $100,000. And um, while that correct number showed up in the uh, appendix D in the back of the um, finance committee report, it was not corrected in uh, article 72 on page 30. So uh, as I understand it, the, the difference is, I didn't do the math in my head, the difference is $100,000. It's $100,000, yes. And, and I just want to take uh, two seconds, Mr. Moderator, to, to make, make the members and uh, the public at large realize that I count no, no less than 14 reports that have presented to town meeting that represent the hard work of many uh, resident volunteers and the staff of the town and schools to present these 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 uh, detailed budgets and 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 other items before us, and uh, they should be applauded for that because it's just we would not run without the, that work. Thank you very much, Ms. Moderator. And Thank Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Thank you. Let's take Ms. Malovchik next. Uh, Ms. Malofschik, uh, name and precinct, please. Uh, Ms. Malofschik, it seems like you're 
you're not muted, but maybe there's an issue with your computer. I'm not hearing anything. Um, why don't we, uh, let's, let's go ahead and take uh, Mr. Moore next. Uh, apologies, Ms. Ms. Malofchik, hopefully you can resolve your issue going forward. Mr. Moore, name and precinct, please. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. I move to terminate debate on Article 72. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate on Article 72. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a second from Mr. Ciano. So let's uh, go ahead and vote on terminating debate on Article 72. Okay, if you are in favor of terminating debate on Article 72, uh, the appropriation for the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund, um, vote yes. If you want to continue debate on Article 72, vote no. And if you have trouble voting through the portal, you can enter, you can type your, your vote into the chat, or into the Q&A, sorry. And if you see a message about that voting will be enabled in um, in the next wave or in two waves, just uh, uh, please be patient. That'll open up shortly. Uh, the first two waves should already be open. The third wave should be opening up in um, just a few seconds at this point. And this is a two thirds vote uh, for terminating debate, or requires two thirds vote. Okay, we're nearing 200 votes cast. See, all the waves of precincts should be uh, enabled for voting. So please get your votes in as quickly as you can. So we could either move on to voting on the main motion or getting back to debate. Um, we have a point of order from Ms. Crowder. Let's uh, take that while we're fin while we're waiting for more votes to roll in. Again, if you have trouble voting in the portal, you could always type your vote into the Q and A. Uh, Ms. Crowder, uh, name and precinct, uh, and your point of order. Yes, Elaine Crowder, precinct nineteen. Um, I'm wondering what the uh, proper procedure is given that Beth Malofchik attempted to speak before the uh, motion to terminate debate, but was unable to. Is yeah, there a she... yeah, I'll clarify that. So given that the, the speaking order is at the discretion uh, of the moderator, it's my discretion. And so it's not fundamentally different uh, than if I had taken Mr. Moore uh, ahead of Ms. Malofchik. Uh, the, the, the reasons are different, but in this case, uh, I didn't want the, wait, the meeting waiting indefinitely while we were resolving potentially uh, computer issues for Ms. Malachek. May I ask one more question? Uh, uh, about procedure? Um, yes, procedure. Think, is there since, a way since, to since we're, since we're waiting for voting, I will entertain it, but we do need to you know, keep points of order for points of order, which this is technically not, but go ahead. Is there a way to take her point in some other way if she couldn't, uh, you know, if she couldn't speak? Uh, not at this point, once we're voting to terminate debate, no. Thank you. Thank you. And apologies to Ms. Malofchik for the technical difficulties. Okay, so just waiting for a handful more votes. So let's just, uh, let's go uh, close voting in 15 seconds. This is voting on terminating debate on Article uh, 72. 10 seconds. 71 is the Is it not 70? No, it's 72, correct? Mr. Frosky? You're correct, 72. 72, okay. Uh, let's close voting. Okay, debate is terminated. Um, 
So we have 196 in the affirmative, 24 in the negative, three abstentions. Let's go straight to voting on the main motion, um, since we're not going to wait for screens for termination of debate votes. And the vote quantum for the main motion is two thirds. Requires two thirds to pass. Uh, Vote yes if you want to appropriate roughly $3 million from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund and for the Board of Assessors to use that amount when determining the tax rate. Vote no if you disapprove of that appropriation. And this requires a two thirds vote. All right, so we have our guy waiting for the T screen, unfortunately. Hopefully, this resolves itself shortly. Uh, and while we're waiting, waiting for votes to come in, let's uh, let's take uh, the point of order from Ms. Kepka. Name and precinct, please, and your point of order. Ms. Kepa, are you able to unmute? The votes are rolling in. Um, so hopefully it is kind of slowly resolving itself. Um, Ms. Kepka, are you able to unmute your computer, your Zoom? Someone on the IT side, maybe speak to, um, like, are, are we having a more widespread issue of uh, folks not being able to unmute? Okay. IT is not aware of any widespread issues. Nothing's been reported via tech support. Hello, Mr. Speaker, can you hear yes. me? Yes, Ms. Kepka, go ahead. Name and precinct, point of order. Hi, hi. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Uh, Asha Kepka, precinct one. Um, I'm a bit concerned that uh, people who wanted to terminate debates, they get to speak before people who don't have a chance to speak. Um, we have number of speakers who are frequent and um, I would like to hear um, from people like Beth Malovchik to um, hear what she has to say. Um, I'm just concerned that uh, we're not having a full debate amongst our town meeting members. Thank you. All right, thank you. I, I will say that, um, well, we do not have a full debate in the sense that we do not wait for all speakers on the speaker queue to get an opportunity to speak. We do at some point have termination of debate. And that was not a point of order. Um, um, and as I said, there is discretion by the moderator uh, by opening things up and making the speaking queue more transparent. It makes it more clear if we're skipping speakers um, uh, but it is ultimately at the moderator's discretion. And I do skip around sometimes, and sometimes I have to skip a speaker if we have a technical difficulty so that the meeting is not waiting indefinitely. Um, we have a point of order from Ms. Preston. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, name and precinct, please. Yes, Joanne Preston, precinct five. Um, one of the things that you said before in terms of procedure, because I'm, I'm also concerned that I'm not hearing all points of view, that if several people feet for it before you terminate debate, they will at least get a sense of an, someone who may be favoring a no vote or a yes vote rather than just have several people which haven't last time talk in favor. Okay, so, so Ms. Preston, I'm sorry, let me cut you off because um, we are just about ready to close voting on, um, on Article 72, voting on Article 72. And I'll just say in response uh, to your statement that uh, that is not a point of order, um, that um, there are several 
individual, several town meeting members uh, who did not get an opportunity to speak uh, because more than two thirds and significantly more than two thirds of town meeting members voted to terminate debate. Um, now, whether someone was earlier in the speaking queue or later in the speaking queue and did not, in either case, if they did not get to speak, that is the right of two thirds of the town meeting members voting um, to terminate debate so they can proceed to voting on, on the main motion. Um, and so that is the decision of the meeting. And the moderator has, I have discretion on choosing the speaking order and I'm trying to be as fair as I can under the circumstances. Thank you. Uh, so with voting, we have 215 votes in. Uh, there's still a number outstanding. Uh, 16 of recently uh, active members in the portal who have not voted yet. There were some issues with uh, some timeouts on the server, some server errors um, that were delaying voting. So I'm inclined uh, to give a little bit more time. Let's give another 30 seconds on this before we close voting. So if you're having trouble voting through the portal, uh, please uh, make use of the Q&A to type your vote in or let's say 20 seconds left. Um, 15 seconds, 10 seconds until we close voting on Article 72, five seconds. And let's close voting. Okay, and so uh, the motion passes, Article 70, the main motion for Article 72 passes the appropriation uh, for the uh, Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. We will wait for all the screens to go through so we can see the votes for all the precincts. Um, So there was a question in the Q&A about whether I can clarify if uh, anyone else uh, can see the vote if you vote on the Q&A. I believe that uh, only the folks who are on the panel at the time can see the votes in the Q&A. Maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but someone who's connected as an attendee, which um, uh, most town meeting members are, unless they're on the panel for some other reason, um, that uh, town meeting members uh, at large would not be able to uh, see those votes cast through the Q&A. Again, if, 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 uh, if that's not correct, uh, someone can correct me. Okay, I believe, I believe we got through the screens. Um, yeah, someone says that we, we clear the votes privately so they cannot, so they are not visible uh, to the public. Okay, so uh, Article 72 uh, has been disposed of. So that brings us back to, so we're now at 10.30. Um, um, Mr. Foskett, do you, uh, I would entertain a motion at this point to uh, remove some uh, articles from the table. Presumably beginning- Yes, uh, Mr. Moderator, this is uh, Charles Foskett, uh, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. And I um, propose that we uh, move, remove from the table uh, articles 17 through uh, 49 through 48. 17 through 48. Obviously, this would only this implicitly would only include articles that we have not yet uh, disposed of. And I'm sorry, uh, what was the first article you mentioned, Mr. Foskett? Uh, article 17. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and do we have a second? These are all old seconds from. Uh, second. There was a second from Ms. Brazil for Mr. Foskett's motion to. Uh, remove articles from 17 forward um, from the table. Um, and, and any objections, please raise your hands in Zoom. Let's enable raise hands in Zoom if it's not enabled already. Say, Mr. Foskett, that was 17 through, I believe, 45, correct? Um, yes. Yeah, and so we're leaving 49 collective bargaining on the table. Yes. Okay, so seeing no objections, uh, Article 17 is now before us. So let's bring up Article 17. Uh, 
And uh, before we get started, we have a point of order from Mr. Revlock. Yeah, perhaps a point of order, uh, Steve Revelock, Precinct 1, perhaps a point of order or a point of personal privilege. Uh, we, the meeting had previously agreed to table Article 17 on, uh, because of a, uh, a medical emergency with one of the proponents. Um, I apologize, I will, with your, per Mr. Moderator, I will endeavor to get in touch with the parties involved and get a proposed date um, when they can reappear uh, by tomorrow. Ah, okay, so uh, there was communication maybe that uh, you were maybe not privy to that they've actually, uh, uh, it's been arranged for them to be present tonight. Uh, well, I was not aware, but um, okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great. Thank you, um, but thank you for the concern. Um, the, yeah, they, they are here. So uh, let's start with, this is the, from the uh, select board report. So let's bring up, uh, uh, Mr. Diggins, uh, chair of the select board to kind of introduce uh, this article and the vote from the select board. Mr. Moderator, I had introduced this already and, and I will have to dig up the file again and to do it. I hate to delay the meeting, but I did introduce this, you know. Oh, okay. My, yeah. my apologies. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So great. Thank you. Okay. No. And I can do it again, but, but. Let's no, no you, you, you're right. Thank you okay. for that. And um, uh, so let's uh, bring up Mr. Revelak. Uh, I, I believe you wanted to uh, introduce the proponent. Uh, to, let's bring up Mr. Revelak. Uh, Steve Revelak, Precinct 1. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, so, Mr. Moderator, I would like to use my time to introduce two individuals who wish to speak on Article 15. 17. Uh, Richie L. Kahuli, who is an Arlington business owner, but resides in another community. And Robert Anessi, who is an Arlington resident. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, very good. Uh, so are we introducing one or both? And let's see, and, and Mr. Emlock is, uh, uh, is Mr. Uh, uh, Kahuli and uh, Mr. Anissi uh, Arlington residents? Uh, right. Mr. Anisi is. Mr. Koholi is not. That is my understanding, Mr. Moderator. Okay. And is Mr. Koholi uh, intending to speak tonight? Uh, yes, I am, uh, Mr. Moderator. Um, but I am going to have Mr. Anisi uh, speak okay. on my behalf first. Okay. So before we get into that, uh, let's uh, 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 let's just uh, uh, do, do we have a. Uh, uh, do we have a, uh, so Mr. Revlock, can you, can you give a, uh, let's get, well, actually, let's give a straw poll in uh, uh, the, uh, the q and I'm sorry, let's back up. In, uh, rate, with raise hands and Zoom, uh, we need, uh, are there any objections to uh, Mr. Gouli speaking tonight, uh, since he is a, a, a non-resident, uh, uh, not a resident of Arlington? Um, so typically we require uh, a majority vote uh, uh, to allow non-residents to speak at, at the meeting if they don't have a right otherwise. Oh, yeah, um, so we have, um, I, don't think I see some hands raised, give folks a little bit more time to, to raise hands. Let's just, let's just give me another 15 seconds to raise hands. Uh, still nowhere near uh, 50%, 10 seconds. Five seconds. If you object to Mr. Cooley uh, speaking, uh, okay. So we have thirteen hands raised, twelve hands raised. We're nowhere near half. So I, I consider that a majority vote to allow Mr. Cooley uh, to speak tonight. And Mr. Anisi is a resident of Arlington, so he has a right to speak. Being introduced by Mr. Revelak, a town meeting member. Um, so uh, the time is. Can we start the uh, the timer, please? Okay, and this will be part of Mr. Revelak's uh, seven minute uh, speaking time. Um, so um, either speaker is uh, free to speak. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Mr. Cooley and you said you wanted to introduce uh, Mr. Anisi. Go ahead, please. And then please uh, state your, and for each of you, could, when, you when you first speak, if you can uh, state your, your, your full name and your address um, and then continue to your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Richie L. Cooley, uh, 6 Jaffrey Street in Saugus, Massachusetts. 
Um, I am going to introduce the attorney Anessi um, to speak on my behalf. And if I have to jump in at the moment, then I will um, raise my hand or unmute myself. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Anissi, do you want to introduce yourself, your name and uh, address, please, for the record? Uh, Mr. Nisi, uh, can you unmute? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, okay. name, All right, name Mr. I, I need to correct the record. Uh, okay. I am not a resident of the town. I grew up here. Uh, I lived here for many years. But I own property here now, but I am not a resident of the town. I want that to be clear. Okay, so before we proceed, we, we can pause the timer because we have to do something procedural. Uh, let's enable raise hands and zoom again. And uh, anyone who objects to Mr. Anisi being able to speak tonight, uh, you can raise your hand and zoom um, if you object. Um, and I'll give about 15 seconds for folks to raise hands. And if it's nowhere near half, then uh, I will declare it a majority vote to allow Mr. Anisi to speak. Five seconds. Okay, so I, only, I see 26 hand, 27 hands raised. That's nowhere near half. So I declare that a majority vote to allow uh, Mr. Anisi to speak. Um, so uh, Mr. Anisi, uh, please continue. And let's uh, resume the timer, please. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I'm an attorney in town, uh, office at 1171 Mass Ave. Uh, I represent Eli's service station. Uh, that's a service, a small gas station at 125 Broadway in Arlington. Uh, one of the problems that uh, Eli has had over the years is he has to have an attendant on site to pump gasoline. He has to pay that attendant as well. But the real problem is retaining people to, in fact, pump gasoline. It's not the most attractive job in the world, and he has a, a lot of difficulty retaining uh, people to pump gasoline. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to point out that Arlington is one of the last communities in the Commonwealth that uh, essentially does not allow one to pump their own gasoline. And uh, I was amazed when I saw that this prohibition goes all the way back to 1975. I don't see that there's any real reason why individuals ought to uh, be able to pump their own gasoline. I'm not suggesting in this article, by the way, uh, that the full service gas stations not continue to, uh, to operate. They certainly can continue to operate. But by the same token, uh, folks like uh, Eli, who have small gas stations, want to be able to compete with surrounding gas stations and surrounding communities where they don't have to pay a gas station attendant. So we're asking that town meeting uh, essentially allow uh, 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 an individual uh, to pump their own gasoline. Now, we understand that there would be a, a fire suppression system that has to be adhered to locally and with the state. Uh, we understand uh, that there are other conditions that would have to be uh, 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 applicable as well. One of the things that Eli has in his gas station and has had for, for some years is he's got a button and the button is in the gas station and the button is out by the pumps. So if there's an individual out by the pumps who needs assistance, that individual remaining in their car can push the button and uh, the attendant will come out of the uh, building and attend that individual. Now, uh, there'll always be an attendant uh, uh, at the gas station, despite the fact that people can pump their own gas. Uh, one of the uh, issues that came up many years ago, I think, at town meeting was, well, if we allow this, who knows what's going to happen with gas stations? They could expand on site, they could do this, they could do that. Well, I want to suggest to you that, that that is not the case. Gas stations in this town are located on the main thoroughfares, Mass Ave, Summer, et cetera. Those main thoroughfares are within the jurisdiction 
of the ARB. Uh, and, and the ARB would have any uh, ju jurisdiction with respect to changes to the gas station use, changes to the building of the uh, gas station and the like. So you've got a, uh, uh, an area of supervision here that you'd have uh, that would be overlooking what happens with respect to any conversion to allowing uh, people to pump their own gasoline. One more very important point that came out uh, during COVID. Oh, just, um, just very briefly, we have about, you have about a minute and a half I'll, left until we run out of time. Very quickly, yeah, very but, quickly. Eli had comments from customers who said, look, we'd rather not have people to people contact. We'd rather not have to give a credit card to someone with respect to the potential for uh, uh, catching COVID. So that's another reason why I believe it's in the best interest of not only my client, but in the best interest of the town to allow people to pump their own gas. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Revlock, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I, Mr. Moderator, I would just like to offer an apology for um, uh, getting Mr. Inessi's uh, place of residence wrong. Um, that was an error on my part. And beyond that, I have nothing further. Thank you. I guess that's why we asked for address. Um, and so before we move on, we do have a substitute motion also um, pending. Um, but before that, let's take Mr. Jamison's point of order. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. I just wanted to, um, um, exactly where you're going is that Mr. Um, Benson has, uh, Mr. Benson has, I believe, a well thought out uh, substitute motion. I wanted to make sure that was brought before the body before we discuss any more. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. We'll, we'll do. So let's bring up, uh, I see Mr. Benson is in the speaker queue, so let's just bring him right up uh, to introduce his substitute motion. and. Uh, that should include uh, an actual motion to substitute. Um, so Mr. Benson, uh, name and precinct, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. And as the moderator pointed out, I have filed a substitute motion. I hope everyone at town meeting has had the opportunity to read it. I'll discuss it briefly. As with the select board recommended vote, this substitute motion would allow self-service gas stations in town. <laughs> however, it, however, the substitute motion makes explicit that the self-service filling stations must meet the fire code for such stations and accommodate persons with disabilities as required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. It also requires attendant pumping of fuel for customers who do not wish or are unable to use self-service. Not all customers can or want to pump their own fuel. And this substitute motion will ensure that no one will have to leave Arlington to have an attendant fill their car's fuel tank. So briefly, where did I come up with these alternatives? I took a look at the Cambridge um, City Ordinance on self-service gas stations, and they had the requirement that the installations comply with uh, regulations for self-service gas stations, fire code regulations. So I included that. The Americans for Disabilities Act has requirements for assistance at self-service gas stations. I thought it was wise to put that in our town bylaw because that would allow the town to enforce it rather than a disabled person having to file a complaint somewhere they could just call the town and have somebody from the town come up and uh, take a look. And the third one, to have either separate and clearly marked pumps for self-service and attendance service or a buzzer call button or some other system to get an attendant. I actually thought of that when I was thinking of my mom who drove until she was about 90 years old. And the older she got, the less likely she was to want to get out of her car to pump her own gas. She didn't live in Arlington, but she would drive a long way to find a self-service gas station. She didn't meet the disability requirements, but she was getting a little old and her bones were getting a little creaky and she would just 
prefer to stay in her car. And I wanted to make sure everyone in Arlington would have an opportunity. So that's it in a nutshell, allows self-service, but requires uh, compliance with the fire code, compliance with the Americans with Disability Act requirements. And even if you're not disabled, you can have the gas pumped if you'd like. Thank you. Okay, and in case Mr. Jamison's uh, point of order is about requiring a second uh, uh, and also a motion, uh, uh, I'll do that right now. Mr. Benson. Yes, uh, I so move. You so so move the substitute motion. And just so, so folks are clear here, I mean, this has been posted online for several days now, so uh, no surprises here. The main difference with the main motion, the main motion strikes or uh, removes uh, Title V, Article V uh, from the bylaws, and this actual uh, the substitute motion by Mr. Benson replaces uh, the uh, 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 Title V, Article V with new text, which we're showing here. Um, uh, if that is not what Mr. Jamison was going to uh, suggest, about, and, and do we have a second for Mr. Benson's? Uh, we already have several uh, before he even made the motion. Uh, Mr. Ciano has seconded it. Um, has the record for the most seconds in an evening tonight. Uh, Mr. Jamison, uh, your point of order, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator, Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, if I understand correctly, um, looking at the, um, I looked at the, uh, the warrant and what, I, what we've been disclosed to, I, I'm in favor of this article, but the um, the I well, would like, order is not a place to talk about what you're what you're in favor of or or disapproval. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Moderator. Um, the, uh, aside from that, I'm worried about the scope of the article because uh, what we've learned tonight is both the proponents who have spoken to us tonight are not residents of of the town, and the the warrant suggests that one of those gentlemen was the proponent on uh, it was that person plus ten registered. Article uh, a res 10 registered voters who presented this to us. And I would like Attorney Himes' um, um, uh, um, discussion of whether this is actually um, a, a valid article for us to, to conceive, to, to, con to um, take before the body, given the fact that the person who is no longer might have been, but is no longer a member. Right. Uh, I, I, I think, you understand, right. Mr. Moderator? I, I, I do, Mr. Jameson. And so just to be clear, so we'll bring up uh, Mr. Heim. These are actually uh, different individuals with the same last name, but uh, you've raised the question about residency. Uh, yes, the, a, a residency is, for the, submitting the article to the warrant. And if they aren't residents, then they can't right, submit the, to the warrant. Just, yeah, so the speaker that we heard briefly tonight, I believe, was uh, Richie L. Kahuli and the uh, the resident uh, with 10 registered voters uh, was Elias uh, L. Kahuli. Uh, Mr. Heim, can you confirm whether, or do you know um, if uh, Mr. Elias L. Kahuli is uh, uh, a resident of Arlington? Or maybe the town clerk could uh, verify residency or voter registration? I'm happy to try, uh, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to my staff. Um, uh, we 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 check every name and signature um, for for residency. Um, on on so, the petitions that that become yeah. warrant articles. Yep. Okay, so if if, if you're satisfied, uh, Ms. Brazil, that Elias Alcahuli uh, is a registered voter of Arlington. Um, uh, let's see, since, since we have Mr. Moderator, yeah, Mr. Jameson, you understand my concern because well, one gentleman uh, was was suggested that he was a resident and suddenly he wasn't. Right. So, so just, as long as the clerk is fine, I'm fine. Okay, uh, and sounds like uh, uh, Madam Clerk is is fine with this, having checked this at the time that the petition was submitted. Correct, uh, Ms. Brazil. That is correct. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Uh, so we have a motion to substitute uh, for uh, the main motion in Article 17. We have a second. Um, and so we now have the main motion and a substitute motion before us. And so let us now um, 
head to the speaker queue. It is uh, getting late in the evening. It's 1052. We can get some speakers in. There's a lot of there's significant interest in speaking. So let, let's see how far we get tonight. Uh, let's take um, uh, Mix Pretzer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is David Fretzer from Precinct 17. Uh, we've heard why a gas station owner might be in favor of this article. I just want to ask the meeting to consider the people who work at gas stations. Uh, people who work at gas stations, these are job opportunities for people that might have trouble getting other jobs due to lack of credentials, uh, lack of um, English fluency, or other challenges that might give them very limited job options. These people can get um, jobs at gas stations. By removing full service, we are reducing the number of these jobs that will be available in Arlington. Um, from my point of view, we are taking away these much needed jobs and not getting anything of comparable value in return. So on that basis, I would ask the meeting to vote against this article. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a point of order from Mr. Quinn. Let's take that. Uh, Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. Um, I didn't catch the full name of the person, but when I've tried to search the database I have on the registered voters, I didn't find it. So I'm hoping to get clarification on that. Thank you. Uh, so we, um, so Ms. Brazil already confirmed that she had looked this up at the time that this uh, petition was submitted. Uh, I, I'm satisfied by that. Uh, if, if someone's going to double check that, we can do that while we continue debate. Thank you. So, um, sir, can we um, get the full spelling of the person's name, please? Uh, I believe this is in the. Uh, can we can we bring that? Can we bring up the uh, Article Seventeen uh, page from the annotated warrant? Is it listed in there? Yes, it's listed in there. Requested by, requested by section. Yep, right there. Inserted at the request of Elias El Kahuli and ten registered voters. So there's the spelling. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right, so again. I don't see that in the list. But, so I defer to uh, Ms. Brazil. And so if I she- I would wishes, ask her to double check. Thank if, you. If she, wish, if she wishes to double check that, uh, we'll do that asynchronously from taking the next speaker. Thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Uh, Penarin next. Name and precinct, please. My unmute option just appeared. Kristen Penaron, Precinct 20. Thank you for taking my question. Um, firstly, well, actually statement, I'm in favor of Mr. Benson's substitute motion um, as a viable option. My personal preference doesn't really matter here, but for the record, I actually love having help with pumping gas at the gas station. I would like to be convinced to vote in favor, but I have two questions that I think are quite important. Uh, they're about economic competition, related to the previous comment and about environmental impacts. Mr. Moderator, you can direct these to the proponents or to anyone else who might have a suitable answer. Mm -hmm. First question, is there any type of association of gas station owners and operators in town, or has there been any kind of collective community feedback from the other owner operators in town about this proposed bylaw change? I would like to know whether anybody else in town is for or against this Any, pilot, anyone else among uh, gas station other owners? gas station owners and operators okay. in town because I'm concerned about the impacts that it will have on operators who would prefer to keep full, the full service model. That's okay. my first question. Okay, so let, let, let's direct that to uh, Mr. Nisi. Uh, Mr. Nisi, are you aware of any kind of coordination, communication, feedback from other gas station owners or operators in town about this article? Uh, Mr. Nisi, if you're able to unmute. I'm not aware of any objection. Uh, you, let's state your, your name and address, please. Yeah, Robert Anessi again. Uh, I'm not aware of any objections from any of the existing gas station owners to what is being proposed. Uh, the, I did speak with a few myself. And I know my client has done that as well. Uh, we have not talked with any members of an association uh, with respect to that issue. 
but uh, just again, uh, conversations with individual gas station owners. So a clarifying question, can yep. you cite any other gas station owners or operators in town who, are, who share your enthusiasm for this change? Can you name any by name? Mr. Anissi? Uh, well, when, when you say share my enthusiasm, my client's enthusiasm, uh, I, I do know that some of the gas station operators want to continue full service. Uh, the whole point of this article is that uh, they can continue to do that. But the minority fellow, my gas station owner, can in fact uh, do something different. He can in fact have people pump their own gas. We're not asking that there be a mandate throughout the town that uh, people pump their own gasoline. Of people course, that's why Mr. Benson's substitute motion is so strong. Um, may I ask my second question, please? I, I go ahead, Ms. Penron. Thank you. Um, so I'm a little concerned um, about where this change could, could go if it goes to its potentially logical conclusion of having every gas station in town turn into a, into a location where um, customer operated pumps are present. Uh, if some gas station owners who prefer full serve feel that they need to offer the, the self-serve option, there will have to be some kind of conversion. So what I wanted to ask is how much construction and retrofitting actually needs to take pl place in order to convert full serve pumps to customer, customer operated pumps. And if there does have to be construction and retrofitting, what can we understand the potential environmental impacts of that to be? Uh, construction of any type might not be cost neutral from an environmental perspective. So that's my second question. Thank you. Well, I'm not I'm an expert. Mr. Nisi? Yeah, yeah, I'm not an expert on that, but uh, I can say this, that we're not talking about uh, uh, construction. We're not talking about uh, uh, building. We're not talking about things of that nature, okay? Uh, we may be talking about adding a pump. Uh, and with respect to adding a pump, uh, I would suggest to you that the environmental impact uh, upon the neighborhood would not be any different than what it is now if you have one or two pumps at the site. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, that's the best answer I can give you on that. Okay, thank you very much. My concern is about removal of functional pumps and replacement of those pumps with new pumps for the sake of changing who is pumping the gas. Um, I'm, I'm done, thank you very much. Thank you. So we're uh, just about at 11 p.m. and we have had uh, kind of uh, sufficient questioning of kind of residency concerns, uh, voter registration that came up in the Q&A that I saw. Uh, and um, so I think this is a good time for us to uh, consider adjourning, but before we do, and, and we can get some questions answered about residency and, and, and contingencies and so on. And so uh, before we do that, I want to, uh, uh, Mr. Heim, you have a hand raised about? Mr. Moderator, if I may, just to try to limit the scope of this. Uh, an article can be submitted as long as it's signed by 12 residents. I'm looking at the petition itself. It appears to be signed, I'm sorry, 10 residents. It appears to be signed by 12 residents. Um, folks can submit articles without necessarily being the person that speaks on it primarily at town meeting. Um, and from what I can tell, there appear to be 12 signatures of folks with Arlington addresses on this particular petition. So just in the interest of trying to limit the scope of, of, of what remains to be done on this article, um, there appear to be 12 folks with listed Arlington um, addresses on the specific uh, petition and it's required to have uh, Thank you. Understood. And so just to be clear, Mr. Heim, you're saying that the, the author of the petition does not need to be a resident or registered voter in Arlington, correct? What I'm saying, Mr. Mo Mr. Moderator, thank you, uh, Doug Heim, Town Council. What I'm saying is that it's a little bit of a semantic difference. Uh, it's a little bit of a semantic game in the sense that there are 12 people who signed this petition. I wouldn't ordinarily consider somebody who's not a resident to be the quote unquote petitioner. The petitioner are the people who signed the petition. Um, Understood if that makes sense, thank you. It, it, it does, and I, I apologize for any confusion. I added to this uh, by uh, um, kind of 
setting a higher bar. Uh, and that was my misunderstanding. I apologize for that confusion. Uh, we are past 11 p.m., uh, so we will have to resume this another time if we adjourn. But before we do that, uh, do we have any notices of reconsideration that anyone wishes to give? Mr. Give Mr. Moderator? Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Foskett, yes? Yes, thank you. Uh, I serve notice of reconsideration of articles 65, 71, and 72. Okay, uh, I trust uh, Ms. Brazil can note that. Um, uh, do we have any other notices of reconsideration? Um, there's a question Q and A, how do we submit them? You just raise your hand in Zoom uh, and I will call on you. And uh, yeah, so Ms. Penarin, um, you have a notice of reconsideration? Yes, Kristen Penarun, Precinct 20. Thank you. I'd like to file a notice of reconsideration on Article 60 and 65. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we have Mr. Gast. Uh, Peter Gast, Precinct 2. I'd like to file a, a notice of reconsideration on Article 62. 62. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Ruderman. Mr. Moderator, Michael Rudeman, Precinct 9, Notice of Reconsideration on Article 62. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, the window is cutting off the end. I believe it's uh, Ms. Carlton Giesen. Uh, yes, Betsy Carlton Giesen, Precinct 9. And I would like to um, give notice of reconsideration for Article 62. 62, it's a popular one. Um, Mr. Rosenthal. Mr. Rosenthal, Mark Rosenthal, uh, Precinct 14, I would like to serve notice of reconsideration on Article 72. 72, okay. Uh, Mr. Fisher? <clears throat> Ezra Fisher, Precinct 4, notice of reconsideration on Article 62. Thank 62. you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Uh, any notices of reconsideration? Um, seeing no more. Um, I would now entertain uh, uh, a motion to adjourn. It's the moderator. Yes, Mr. Foskett. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. I move that we adjourn. I do we have a second? Okay, we have a second from Ms. Ms. Brazil for Mr. Foskett's motion to adjourn. Uh, any objections? Raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, we have one objection. Um, I don't know how late folks want to go, but um, we have two. Three, we'll wait a little bit. Um, okay, I see two hands. Uh, I declare that a majority vote uh, to adjourn. So we are adjourned until, uh, let's see, Monday, the, oh, I have to look it up now. Um, 23rd, Mr. Moderator. I'm sorry? The 23rd. 23rd, Monday, May 23rd. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. You're welcome. See you, 8 p.m. Monday, May 23rd.